back to another episode of Sisters Talk TV. My name is Lucy and I am one half of Sisters Talk TV. Before we begin, please do like, subscribe, comment, of course, share, and also don't forget to follow us on Instagram and Twitter at Sisters Talk TV. That is where we keep you guys updated with some of our reviews and some of our updates. And again, we just want to say thank you all for your continual support. Really, really appreciate it. And again, um, continue to support us and help us grow and um, with our algorithm. And of course, just get it out there. And of course, on our way to our 1,000 subscribers. All right. So we begin with our review of Real Housewives of Atlanta. And let's just kind of go back to last week's episode. We just want to recap a few important things, some of their major events. That really happened on the show um like last week we got to see drew and ralph talk to their son um in regards to his biological father and it was just a moment where it was just a um, mother and son moment and also having ralph there who wasn't who isn't the biological father but he was able to kind of engage in that conversation with Drew's son in regards to getting to meet his um, biological father. We also get to, well, it's also a scene where Fallon had a Halloween party and all the ladies in attendance. And of course, this is also the scene where Latoya and Fallon have exchange of words. Actually, Latoya had a change of words with majority of the ladies and a lot of them was not here for it. Even her so-called best friend, Miss Kenya Moore, was not here for it either all right so another important event that happened in this episode was also kenya moore was criticized for wearing her native american head or native american headdress to the halloween party now the costume was called offensive and um very and racist by a nonprofit called Alum, Alum Native, which is a which is a nonprofit organization that increases aware awareness for the Native Americans um, in the American society. So they brought this to to our attention, and of course, however, Kenya Moore did come out and also apologize for this inappropriate wearing of the headdress and admitted that if she knew better she would have done better so Kenya Moore did come out and she apologized and hopefully this is again one of the moments one of the um, teachable moments for her and not just for her but also some of the uh, cast members as well now Kenya wasn't the only one who apologized apologized in regards to this incident Bravo also came out to also apologize addressing that incident, this incident and also again called it a teachable moment and that again this was something that everyone is now aware of and hopefully this moving forward this will not happen again however we a lot of people were not here for it um now as we recap bravo apologies did have a lot of people um, questioning some of the events that has happened in the franchise um, when for instance an incident that happened um, where no account accountability was taken um, for instance in the past we saw when Luann was addressed in a black face had a black face on Real Housewives of New York but no apology was ever given about this and so which questions which people got people questioning whether if it's just that if it's just the Kenya incident that happened is why you guys are all drawn to a lie but there's been so many things that's been said that's been racist or that's been discriminating against another group but it has but there's never been light shed on it so it was interesting that they dropped this particular incident and had to apologize on the behalf of Kenya Moore so it has definitely had everyone questioning and they did get a lot of backlash for this um yeah so that was a lot of um, there was a lot of things that did happen uh, in the past episode but again those were the major ones the major issues um, that did happen again we know currently latoya and fallon are not really in a good speaking terms because again we see on social media platform that they did go back and forth and 
I would say that Latoya is really now the the elephant in the room because it seems like no one's really here for Latoya at the moment. It seems like Latoya has a lot to say in regards to everything, so she's definitely the elephant in the room. All right, so moving on to this week's episode, we have the ladies going to Louisiana, New Orleans, uh, for Drew. Drew has um, some work that she has to do there. And of course, this trip is hosted by Drew. And unlike Kenya's trip, Drew has all the ladies and a private jet. And just like Miss Kenya Moore, Drew did assign the ladies their own room. But that's only if the ladies would twerk or at least shake the, some of their tail, tail feathers in order to get the, some of the room selections. Whether if it was the good rooms, the big rooms, or the small rooms, they had to shake their fe- tail feathers. But however, we know that Miss Kenya Moore was not here for it and she thought this was a little degrading, that she wasn't coming out here to shake her tail feathers. Um, but do you guys remember like a few seasons ago when they were in Greece, Kenya had also the ladies engage in this engage in this similar activity. So why is it now that Kenya is calling this degrading and this and that, but she had the ladies doing the same thing a few seasons ago? Anyways, all in all, Kenya did opt out and she did upgrade her room to a bigger room for her nanny because of course Brooklyn also came on a trip because Drew did inform the ladies who they can bring their children if they want it. All right. So Drew also has that some activities planned out. Like for instance, she had the bike riding in which the ladies attended, and she had the Zydeco dance, and which we we've seen a glimpse of that. Um, now I also like to say that Candy Candy did not. Uh, initially attend with the ladies when they were going because she did wasn't she was in california filming for some gigs that she had and also marlo did not attend some of these events but she said that her back was hurting and i believe the only event that we saw marlo in was when they went to the zydeco i believe the dance was when we actually saw marlo but however um some of the events we did not see marlo now in the scene, in the in the scene where they had, uh, have a Zydeco dance, we get to see Marlo and Portia discuss their friendship. Um, as Kenya will call Marlo her new bestie. So you all know that Ken, uh, Portia has just been a little bit antsy about this new development on both Marlo and Kenya's relationship. So Marlo basically, I'm sorry, Portia basically explains to Marlo that. Um, She is just a little bit hurt by this and Marlo um, But however Marlo also let Portia know that she stood by her doing when her and Kenya were both pregnant and Even during the um, Yeah, during Kenya's uh, Kenya and Portia's pregnancy um, They you know, they were hanging out because they had so much in common. They had play days with both Pilar and baby Brooklyn but this this is just a question now why is it that Portia is so concerned about whether Marlo and Kenya are developing this friendship now we can remember another season past seasons um during their Greece trip where Marlo and me where Portia and me hugged it out talked and no one really knew what their discussion was when asked Portia, she said she didn't really say anything in regards to what her and Nene discussed. So why is it now that she feels like she has something to say about this French, this new development of a friendship? Why is it? Why is Kenya so important in the topic in this particular topic? Why is it that every time she is bringing up about this friendship? Why is it so much of a concern to Portia? Why is it that it's so so important to Portia? Now, so the conversation 
went sour, of course, um, when Marlo asked Portia, was everything that Kenya said, was it false? Basically, she was relating to the possibly the BLM movement and also the Volo situation. And Portia basically asked her, she's basically like, you're the, you're out of all the friends that I have, you're the only person that came and asked me this. And basically insinuating that Marlo should know her better and know that none of this is true. Um, so it kind of, it kind of for me, it kind of probably got uh, Portia really questioning their friendship and kind of like where Marilyn, where Kenya may have an influence on how Marlo is possibly thinking or taking her as. So I think that that's kind of where that is now. But however. Um, Portia says that I quote we are in a space it's a tour center and we don't forgot this ish out and they hugged it out so so yeah so they ended up you know just hugging it out and they're just like they'll see where where this takes them and that was that was that so now the ladies are at dinner we have this scene where the ladies are at dinner and there's some delicious cuisines. We see there's some fried gators and oyster bites. And Portia, of course, is, says she's a ba baby vegan, but she's also willing to try some of the delicacies out. And I'm just questioning, some of you guys are vegans out there. Now, is it okay, whether if you're a baby vegan or you're, you know, you've been a vegan for a while, whether if it's okay to just try something that you know that you are not supposed to be eating because for me if I was a vegan I would not eat whether if I'm a baby vegan or a long-term vegan I wouldn't be touching that because that's a commitment that I've made to myself um that this is the route this is the path that I'm taking so I found it interesting that she made that comment um but people could look at it as oh Portia is trying to try try out some new things or she's willing to you know um be open um just to just open to new things in general um so again this is also the scene where the ladies confront the elephant in the room again latoya and her behavior at fallon's party now latoya doesn't apologize for this particular behavior um she doesn't hold herself accountable at all and Drew, this is also where the scene where Drew grills her and she questions her and basically asks about her sob sobriety, um, just why she's not drinking and just continue to continue to grill her. Basically, why are you not drinking? Why are you not drinking? And she's constantly repeating it. Now, Drew's behavior to Latoya was just at the moment seemed a little bullish. To me, it did. Um, and because she just kept repeating it and it just seemed like she was demanding for Latoya's response and just right away and I also feel like Drew may know something that we possibly don't and however it was revealed that her and Latoya did go to church together and they committed they were committed to fasting and this all happened off camera. So this is a part where production didn't really show us. So yeah, that kind of got me because I was just like, why does she, why is she, why is she grilling Latoya? Why is she constantly asking why is Latoya not drinking? Because again, this is something that could be so um, sensitive to some people, um, especially when it comes to consumption of alcohol and just some of the, you know, some of this habits that people um, go and get into. So it was just interesting to actually hear Drew. That was the only thing that was just kind of like on her mind. So I was like, why are you, you know, why are you doing this, you know? So, yeah. So that was, uh, that was that scene. And um, Latoya ended up leaving. And Kenya also followed her behind. So, and Kenya was not here for Drew either. She, she didn't she also thought it was a little bit bullying as well um so she left latoya and they went back to the hotel now this scene i also saw that this was uh drew also for me i thought this was also a scene where she was shaming 
Michael Toyer for consumption of alcohol. And it could also be that Drew, um, that they're holding Latoya accountable for all her unscreen behavior um, of empathy. Like she, um, some of her things that she's done, like her behaviors that she's um, apologetic for. So this is also could be a scene that, you know, they're pulling, putting her on the stand. Um, so yeah, but either way, they, either way, Latoya doesn't apologize for anything. I don't think she even thinks that she did nothing wrong. Um, so yeah, that's what this scene kind of ends up. I think I've covered all of the things, all of the major events that happened. Um, so next week we get to get, get into more of this. Um, I believe there's a hurricane coming in. Um, there's a storm coming in. So we get to kind of see a, a little bit of that. Um, and I think we also get to see a bit of Marlo and Portia go at it, I believe. So that's all next week. And I cannot wait to also review this um, scene. So please do stick around. Again, um, please don't forget to like, subscribe, and comment. And also continue to help us grow. We really, really appreciate your support. Again, until next time, peace, love, and blessings.